welcome to the 27th episode of the J&J Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Vasallo. And I am your temporary co-host, Mark Frohungry. It is a pleasure to be here, Joe. It's a pleasure to have you. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We have some unfortunate news. Uh, John was uh, hit by a, a, a car. It was actually a cart, a shopping cart. He was at the bottom of a hill, and someone pushed a sharp shopping cart down and hit him, and, and he's in the hospital. And, uh, and no, that's just in my wildest dreams. He's actually taking care of his uh, grandpa this weekend, so he won't be with us, but Mark Fro Hungry is. Uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for the fans who were not around for your first episode with us. Well, for the fans who were not around for the first episode... I am a competitive eater of sorts. I don't do it nearly as much now as I used to, but I still consider myself kind of an amateur competitive eater. There's that. I'm uh, majoring in chemistry at college, and I like a few things. Well, I'm obsessed with a few things, uh, such as Weird Al and Brickleberry. Awesome. What's Weird Al? Uh, now, are you asking for the fans, or do you not know? I legitimately don't know, but I suppose I'm also asking for the fans. Okay, well, basically, he's he is an artist who approximately half of his songs are parodies of other songs, and then the other half are original songs kind of in the style of other genres or artists. Basically, he started in the – well, I mean, he got famous in the early 80s with uh, his parody of Michael Jackson's Beat It called Eat It. <laughs> um, and then ever since then, he's been he's been flourishing. So I mean, he's been around for, I mean, he's been doing his thing for nearly forty years. Wow. Okay. Cool. 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 So he must be he must be a big thing. Yeah. I mean, I would consider him a big thing. Nice. And how's uh how's the quest to get Brickleberry back on? Any new news on, on that front? <sighs> Unfortunately, not really. Uh, the thing is, all the outlets that you know we tried since the last time we spoke, they never got back to us. So, mm -hmm. you know, no news is bad news in this case. But I mean, the comic book is coming out July 13th, and uh, hopefully that'll you know respike the series and get more people interested in it. Like maybe people who've never even seen the show who just see the comic and think that looks cool. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now I I'm ashamed to say that it has been several weeks since you were last on, and I still have yet to watch Brickleberry. I hope you can forgive me. Oh, man. I mean, I can I can forgive you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, it's it's really up to you. I remember you, you know, saying, I, you know, I remember you, you know, you're, you're serious into your faith, which I respect, and rem remembering that I don't think Brickleberry is a show that, you would like and or support. Hmm. Well, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate that respect from you. And on that same note, um, I understand like how much Brickleberry uh, means to you, and I sincerely hope that they definitely put it back on. Oh, thank you, Joe. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. Have you seen any uh, good movies? I feel like this is a big a big month for movies. Let's see. Uh, the last movie I saw in theaters was Neighbors Two. And I like that. Um, I'm not sure. I liked it a little bit less than the first one, but it was. I, I still liked it. Uh, let's see. Besides that, I mean, that was that was really the only thing off the top of my head that I can recall. What about you? I've. Uh... I really want to see. I'm. I'm hoping to see um, Independence Day resurgence this weekend or this week, upcoming week. Okay, nice. Did you? Are you a fan of the first one? Yeah, I am. I enjoyed the first one. Um, I was very pleased about uh, how X Men Apocalypse turned out. Did you? Did you see it? I did not. Oh, it's really good. I, I highly recommend it. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to watch it. Are you? Are you an X Men fan in general? Not really. I mean, I, I I never really got into the superhero genre. Oh, okay. But I mean, I from what I've seen, you know, I I like the Spider-Man movies growing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not a, I, I, I don't know as much about 
you know, superheroes or Marvel or DC as I do it for, like, Brickle Barrier or Weird Al. Yeah, no, that's cool. Like, everybody's different. Everybody likes their own thing. So, uh, we have, you know, I, I don't know if you, uh, you follow the show, so you probably know this. We, Me and John usually talk about what we had for lunch. So, uh, what do you have for lunch? Today for lunch, well, t- since today we're recording this on a Sunday, Sundays are, are my day where I try to eat healthy because six out of the seven days, the rest of the week, I don't. So today I had a big piece of watermelon, almonds, an apple, and a banana. Nice, nice. What you have? I had – I know that this is going to sound terrible, and it was terrible for my health. Like my my, my, my uh, arteries are probably going to hate me. <laughs> but it was – I mean it was so worth it. Oh, I so bet. I had, um, have you ever seen one of those bagels that are like huge, like the size of your face huge? Yeah. So I had a bagel with turkey, bacon, butter, potato chips, and avocado sauce, and a Pepsi. And that was my lunch. That sounds amazing. It was amazing. I'm assuming you got this from like some specialty bagel shop? I actually got it from uh, Panera. Oh, okay. Wow. Did, What's it, yeah. What was it called? It was the um, BLT without avocado, and then I just ordered an everything bagel instead of regular uh, bread, and then they put the butter on it for me. Oh, wow. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, and then of course you know you can have, you can order chips like they have a side of either chips, soup, or uh, or bread. And or so bread, I ordered yeah. the chips, and I put uh, and I put the uh, <laughs> chips in the, the bagel sandwich thing. That sounds awesome. It was. It was really. I was ah, so happy. Yum. So, I have a question for you. Uh, sure. Like, hypothetical question. Sure. Go you ahead. You just committed a crime. Right, you just you just uh, you stole five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry, right? <laughs> and what do you do as soon as you uh, you 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 steal this? You pull it off and and it works great. What do you do? What's the first thing you do? <sighs> well, I mean, I feel like there's not much you can do with it because if someone was to steal five hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry, I feel like that would be something big in the news. So. It's not like I could just, you know, go to a pawn shop and pawn it off. So, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to, you know, store it for several years until the whole thing blew over. Right. Like, that's a logical thing to do. That's one of lo- many logical uh, responses. But uh, according to this, on Thursday, a man was caught with, five, you know, $500,000 dollars of, um, of stolen jewelry after he posted about it on Facebook. <laughs> What do you think about this? Well, let me ask you. Did he say? Did he say something like, you know, I just stole five hundred thousand dollars of jewelry. Uh, you know, hit me up if you want to buy some. Or did he say he just something like, you know, I've recently obtained a large amount of, of, of costly jewelry. So it was. Uh, it was uh, the basic. So he posted a video on Facebook, actually, and so it said, we stole this safe. Can anybody say ka-ching, please? And then a picture, and then, like, him standing next to the safe, which held $500,000 worth of jewelry, which by that, like, it was reported by the police, and then he was caught. That is, like, you hear about these things, and and you think, you know, there's no one stupid enough to do these things, but, man, that, that blows my mind that someone would post about that i know i mean to me that that's just saying you know look at what i just did come arrest me right exactly it's stupid right i i don't know have you ever read um have you ever read the sherlock holmes series i have not i mean i I know what it is obviously you know sherlock watson but no i've never read the books so in the original one one thing i really value about one of the main criminals is that he never gets caught because he never shows off his crime right like i feel like i feel like when we really i feel like there are so many crimes that people commit and we'll never know the grand scale of them simply because they never reveal themselves yeah i agree Right. And to me, I feel like this is almost an insult. Like these these guys posting on Facebook are almost an insult to the cops because they're like thinking like like that they're that stupid. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that there are 
you know, things happening that we have no idea about just because they're actually smart about it and smart in the sense, you know, not to get caught, not smart as in, you know, okay, it was a good thing that they did. It was smart of them. No, because it's probably not. Right, right. I personally, I hope someday, maybe someday, if I can, I will start a reality TV show with retired criminals who never got caught. <laughs> well, I think that would be great. No, I think that would be good. I mean, as long as it was, like, past the statute of limitations and, you know, they were guaranteed that they weren't going to, you know, get arrested for it. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll never forget this as long as I live. I hope that this is past the statutes of limitations, but even if it's not, I didn't commit this crime. I'm just telling the story. But <laughs> yeah, I, I went on a, a a missions trip, right? And as I was on this missions trip, and we were we were preaching, and we had microphones. This woman comes up and grabs the microphone, and she's like, "I repent to the Lord." She's like, "I murdered ten people." Wow. Right? She was like, she was like, uh. Hang on one second. My brother's here, and he can't hear what I'm about to say. William, go inside. Sorry, my brother's eight, and I don't want him to hear what I'm about to say. Okay. Goes like this. She goes like this. She's like, those mother effers killed my family. So I flew over there, and I killed them all with a gun. Wow. Like in front of like this entire – we had a huge crowd of people, right? And we're all looking at each other because you don't really know what to do in that kind of a situation. You know, for what it's worth, like we were prepared for like – we were trained – on what to do during this mission trip, but to be fair, like a situation like that, we weren't prepared for. No, that's that's extreme. Yeah, that was crazy. Wow. And so you think that you think that this was legitimate? Um, it was hard to tell. The woman was fairly drunk. Okay. Right, but it, like I couldn't tell if it was if she was being serious or if she was just like, hey, like I'm gonna make a spectacle. Right. Right, so it was really, it was very interesting. I couldn't, I couldn't really tell. Um, the same woman actually did something terrible to one of my friends. Uh, we were, we had like a prayer stand uh, that was set up to pray for people, and she comes up and she was like, uh, and completely drunk. I mean, like hammered, right? Right. But you can smell the alcohol on her, and she's like, "Pray for me. I was just diagnosed with, uh, with uh, cancer of the breast, right?" Okay. The, the way she actually said it was uh, titty cancer. Right? Yeah. And so, and so my friend Scott goes to put his hand on her shoulder and she, and, and he, he's like, she's like, no, I said titty cancer, not shoulder cancer. And she grabs his hand and places it on her breast. Man, that is, that's pretty low. Yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty. And my friend Scott just like pulled back and was like, oh no, like I can't do that. And she grabbed his hand and was like, yes, you can. Man, you wouldn't think stuff like that would happen where, you know. Yeah, no, it was it was on a mission funny. trip. But yeah, wow. no, it, it was great. It was really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, so just like with with statues of limitation, I sure hope that because we had there were police at that event too. You know what I mean? Like you have to have security. Yeah. And so I hope for her sake that whenever she committed that, you know, she basically gave a confession. So. Yeah, maybe maybe they questioned her afterwards. Maybe. Or maybe they maybe they thought, okay, she's not in you know a sound state of mind. She's obviously intoxicated. We can't take what she's saying, you know, for truth. Right, right, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Man, um, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. That is that's very crazy. Um, let's see here. I'm so I'm on I'm on actually a website for weird news stories. So that's where I got the fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Thing. So uh, okay, so here we go. What do you uh, – so, you know, you're hanging out, right, hypothetical once again. Uh, you're hanging out, and you're, you're – see a lake, right, and you're with uh, your girlfriend, right, and you decide to go skinny dipping, right? What's okay. the last thing you expect to happen? The last thing I would expect to happen? Yes. Well, I mean, I wouldn't expect to, you know, meet ISIS at that pond, well, that's, that's a fair statement. Now, I feel bad for these two uh, lovers. They were skinny dipping. And uh, what comes down and swoops away their underwear except a hawk? <laughs> <laughs> I could just picture that. These guys were getting funky in a, in a lake, and then, bam, the hawk swoops down and steals their clothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's That just sounds like something, you know, straight out of a movie or a TV show. That's pretty funny. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Do you have any uh, any experience with any birds or anything like that? Uh, I, I do not. 
No, I've never. Re- well, I mean, one time a bird flew in my house, and my dog, like, it was crazy because, like, the dog, like, it, it was like it just touched it and it died. Like, I, I don't know how it was so trained in killing birds, but it was amazing. That sounds amazing, man. That's great. yeah, from the great. standpoint. Of, like, she just, like, took her paw and, like, hit the bird, and, like, the bird didn't move, you know, again. Uh, yeah, wow, that's crazy. Wow. I, I Now, I've heard stories like that. I've mm-hmm. never seen anything like that, though. Like, so I know we had uh, – my dad had a cat named Charlie, right? And I was really sad that I didn't get a chance to see this, but apparently – a bird flew near Charlie, and he just ate the entire bird, like <laughs> one swallow bite thing. <laughs> and I was really depressed about the fact that I was not there at that time to see that. Because there's nothing I like more in this life than seeing animals kill each other, like eat each other. Like, I think it's the best thing in the world. It's, it's nature at its best. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty, pretty amazing, just like a spectacle to see. Right, right. Yeah. I, See, these damn birds, man, one of them pooped on me the other day. Man, went, that, that hasn't happened to me thus far in my life, but... I was just, I was with my family at a zoo, and we were sitting at a bench minding our own business. I had some dipping Dots, and then, like, this bird poops on my shoulder. That's, that's pretty foul. It was, it was very foul. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm, shoot, I went out, I ate chicken that night. I made sure something had to suffer for what it did. Yeah, that's you'll show that bird. Yes, I will. I don't always agree with genocide, but when I do, it's about birds. And fried chicken. And fried chicken. <laughs> exactly. Let's see what other? <laughs> let's see what other stories we have on this. Um, what site are you on? I'm on uh, MSN Weird News. Oh, okay. MSN. So while I'm looking for for stuff, uh, want to talk about the elections? Sure. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I heard a sense of, uh, of hesitancy there. If you don't want to talk about it, we don't have to. We can well, totally it, it, it's not that it's not that I don't want to talk about it. It's just inevitably, no matter what you say, as far as politics, you're going to offend someone. But uh, sure. I mean, I mean, we're not making anyone listen to this. <laughs> They're doing it out of their free will, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, honestly, I there's really. I mean, because, okay, it's going to come down to, you know, the big two. It's going to come down to Hillary and Trump. And the thing is, I, I'm I'm not willing to support either one of them. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, I'm going to use my, my, my right as an American to vote, not to vote. That's legit. That's legit. So, I mean, that's kind of where I stand. Both of them, I, I just, I couldn't support in a good conscience. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm, you know, I think I'm pretty much in the same boat as you are. Um, in that regard, I don't think that I'll be able to vote for either of them because I, it's just, God, they're both so stupid. <laughs> I can't. I just you can't endorse that. Alone. Yeah, just on principle alone. I mean, it's, I don't think I can do it. Exactly. It's just, it's like regardless of who becomes the next president, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think that I might take an eight-year trip to Ireland or like somewhere <laughs> not here. Yeah, Canada's not too far away. I'm actually like an hour and a half away from Canada. There you go. <laughs> I'm like mad close, but I I don't know I don't know Canada. I I feel like I feel like Clinton's lies and Trump's stupid will reach all the way contaminate even Canada, you know. And it they may. It's just it's just awful. Now, who do you think will win, like, despite your opinion? Oh, man. Again, it really is looking – it's looking 50-50, honestly, because there are a lot of Trump supporters, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who just want to see a woman president and don't care about, you know, what that means as far as the character of who becomes the woman president. So – I honestly, it really, at this point, it seems like a 50-50 chance in either favor. That's fair. That's, that's, what, do yeah. you, do you, what do you think? Is there one that you think is going to win over the other? Um, that's really hard. It, it's hard because I feel like there are a lot of people that are voting for Trump. Like I yeah. feel like if we went by sheer numbers, it would be Trump. But because we don't go by sheer numbers, we have the, co- uh, the college vote. Electoral, or whatever, yeah. The electoral college, vote. yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like maybe Clinton will win. Exactly. It's it's hard to tell at this point. It really is. And you know what? I think that it, it's really scary that we went – I feel like we've gone from stupid, stupider to stupidest, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like what, 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 it, was, it was Clinton, Bush, and then Obama, right? Yeah. Right? So we've basically gone from dumb, dumber, dumber than dumber, and now <laughs> we're like hitting dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah it's i just wish there was a candidate who was who was moderate as far as both it seems like both trump and it seems like trump is is like look at me i'm super conservative in every way possible and it seems like hillary is like look at me i'm liberal in every way possible why can't there just be a moderate candidate exactly exactly absolutely i couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. And it's just like, it's like, my gosh, people, like, have we been so polarized by our differences? Like, by the, I feel like a lot of people don't actually care about the values of their party. They just care about the fact that they belong to their party. Exactly. That's what it comes down to. Right, right. Um, now, could I bring up something? <laughs> yeah, by all means. Okay, now, again, if this, if, if, you, if this makes you uncomfortable, you know, obviously, you don't have to talk about it. But a few weeks ago, I, I saw, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago, I saw a post from you uh, saying something along the lines of, on Facebook, saying something along the lines of, uh, you know, it, it's it's a tragedy that all these lives were lost, but at the same time, we shouldn't get caught up in the you know, homosexual agenda. And it seemed like that offended a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I want you to know, Mark, there's probably, I don't think there's anything that you could say that could offend me. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Like, I don't, I'm not easily offended. I'm easily offensive, right? So, but I'm not easily offended. But I'm not I, easily offended either. That didn't yeah. offend me. I was just like, I was just like, wow, I can see where this would offend people. Right, right. And so what do you like are, do you have a question about it or like do you want me to comment on it? it basically yeah. basically can you just explain, you know, in, in more detail what you meant? I mean, I think I know what you meant, but I I want to, you know, confirm. Right. So 49 people, 50 people, 49 homosexuals were killed in Correct. Orlando. And yeah. that's a tragedy, right? And we should pray for the, you know, pray for their, uh, for the victims, right? And comfort mm -hmm. the victim's family. But what we shouldn't do is look at the victims and say, because they were gay and they were killed, I'm going to support homosexuality. Right? Okay. So the gay, now, like, like, let's be fair, right? Like, everyone has an agenda, right? I'm going to tell you oh, yeah. something, right? I, I'm a pastor in training, right? And I'm going to tell you something that you're never going to hear a pastor say, and it's that we have an agenda, and it's get to get somebody into church and believe in Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I know that. Right? And so, like, the the gay agenda is for people, to have people to support homosexuality. Right? Now, for me, it has nothing to do about the fact that 49 homosexuals were killed. It has to do with the fact that 49 people were killed, or 50 mm -hmm. people were killed. Right. Okay. No, that's that's fair. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much what I thought you meant. But I just saw that you got some, you know, you got some people uh, who were upset with that. Right, right. And and I think it's funny. I don't know if you read the comments. Did you? Um. Yeah, I read them at one point. I don't know if there were more or not. I just saw it, and I was just like, I think that someone's going to be mad in the comments. And then I looked in the comments, and someone was mad. Right, and so I think it was particularly interesting, and I'm not going to drop names because I don't right. actually know if I'm legally allowed to drop names off my friends list. But you, you, I think you are, but I wouldn't because it could just it could just backfire. Just, yeah, exactly. It's just not a good thing. But uh, I got cursed out by a good friend of mine who used to be a good friend of mine, and she's lesbian, and I I think it was interesting that a pe like she's telling me I'm judgmental when I never actually judged her for being a uh, lesbian. Right. right? Uh, and I just thought that was very interesting that her reaction towards uh, me wasn't just not appreciative of what I said, but it was also fairly volatile. Right. It was, yeah, it was, there was, there was some, ang there was a lot of anger in it. Yeah. And so I just – I think it's very interesting. Like I, I think it's interesting that a people group – at least in my experience, so I'm not speaking for, for 
I'm not saying every gay person is like this, but I'm saying that in my experience, I've mm-hmm. met more gay people or lesbian people who are angry, right, at mm-hmm. just the fact where we're saying, like, hey, like, the Bible says homosexuality isn't okay, right? And their response is more judgmental than, you know, say, like, a regular Christian. And I'm not talking about people like the Westboro Baptist Church. They're a whole different category. Right. What do you think about it? What do you think about, like, the the whole situation in Orlando? And and do you think that we should be sad because 49 gay people died? Or do you think that we should be sad just because 49 people died? I think we should be sad just because 49 people died. I don't care if they're, you know, gay, bi, you know, some, you know, religion that, isn't isn't mainstream you know if they're short or tall or fat or skinny i just think you know it's it's bad that it's unfortunate that 49 people died absolutely and what do you if you don't mind me uh saying asking you this and if if you do mind just say joe i don't feel comfortable asking that uh you asking me this but what's your stance on on um gun control and everything like that that's a that's a really good question well personally i think that at this point there is absolutely nothing that there's nothing that um, gun restriction well I wouldn't say that but there's almost nothing that gun restrictions would do at this point because in circulation there are over 300 million guns so it's not like you know it's not like the government can just press a button and they all just suddenly disappear I mean they're they're here and they're not going anywhere so I think it's stupid when when some politicians say, well, if we would just pass, you know, this law that makes it harder to get guns, then the crime will stop. No, it it's it's I mean, it's never going to stop, regardless if you give a gun to every single person or you you know take them away. Well, or you make it so, you know, no one else from in the future of now can buy a gun. I think that this is just going to continue to happen. And it's just it's unfortunate. But, you know, there's just not much that can be done at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. I get what you're saying. And what is your stance on ISIS? Like, do you think that we should be more aggressive with them? Because at the end of the day, like, yes, this man was like grew up in the United States, but he proclaimed ISIS right. for doing what he did. Right. I think that, you know, I'm not I'm not even really sure what's what's like what the extent of, you know, how much we're fighting ISIS. I mean, are we? Are we, you know, using drone strikes on them every hour of every day? Are we, you know, once a day? Are we, you know, raiding them, you know, with infantrymen on on the the ground? Like what, how, what, like how, just how much are we fighting them? I don't, and I, I, based off of what I know, right, so I'm not saying I know everything about the situation, but just based off what I do know, I don't think that we are fighting fighting them much at all. I think that other countries are fighting them. Okay. In that, okay. In that case, I mean, it's it seems like we don't have a choice as far as, I mean, it seems like it's just something that we have to do because I mean they're, you know, they're claiming victims on our side. You know, we have to make that stop. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that it goes even beyond. Um, I might get in trouble for this. If you're listening to this and you get offended too bad um <laughs> but uh, i think that we what we need to do with isis is even go beyond conventional warfare okay so, so like what and what i mean by that is they're not following the geneva convention uh laws of warfare so then when dealing with them why should we right right you yeah get that, what I'm saying? Like, yeah yeah and so, like, whatever we need to do to deal with them, I think that it needs to be dealt with. Because they're not just killing Americans either. They're killing innocent people from all around the world. Yeah. And it's just it's just so sad. Yeah, no, I think they, they should definitely be stopped. Now, um, I have an interesting question for you. Sure. So do you think that um, – I want to – I'm trying to think about how I want to phrase this. So there was this video that was posted, right? And it was of this guy dressed up like a Muslim, and he threw a uh, a uh, briefcase and screamed Allah Akbar, and people freaked out and ran, right? And then he dressed up like a regular person, and he threw a briefcase and said, praise Jesus, and nobody did anything, right? And he mm-hmm. was saying that this is proof of Islamophobia, right? Do you think that's an accurate statement? 
I think that. I mean, actually, yeah, I, I actually, I think it is because the thing is, in America, you know, Christianity is is mainstream. There are a lot of Christians. Um, you know, the Muslim faith faith is not nearly as mainstream. It's here, but when we hear about, you know, Muslims, it's typically you know, they went on this mass shooting or they wanted to do this. So I think that it's really the media portraying them, you know, the wrong way and making it seem as though any time, you know, you see a Muslim, they're out to kill someone when, you know, the huge, huge majority of the time they're peaceful. Well, yeah, and I think the the difficult part is you don't see many non-Muslim terrorists. Right, which also it causes a big rift in trying to figure out who is the who are the peaceful Muslims and who are the not so peaceful Muslims. Right, but I mean, I think the reason why you don't see so many, you know, non-Muslim terrorists is just because the media isn't showing us. That's not fair. Because I'm, I mean, if you think about the um, you know, that the the Charleston church shooting, he wasn't a Muslim. He was just a you know, just some angry white guy who you know, had these, you know, ridiculous, radical views of African-Americans. Right, right. And and that wasn't portrayed the same way, like, the Orlando shooting was. Right, that was, yeah, exactly. That was just portrayed as, you know, yeah, it, right. not nearly the same way. Or even, I don't know if you know about, uh, have you ever heard of the Weathermen? Um... I mean, I've, I've watched them on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> no, they were actually – they were a terrorist group back in the 60s, and they were – none of them were they, – it, it was the political thing. It wasn't even a, a Christian thing, and we no, never I, hear about them in our, uh, in our schools. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I never – I hadn't heard about them. Yeah, they're, they're crazy. Like, they, they did some crazy – they pulled off some crazy stuff. And, like, my, my teacher, right, I had a history teacher. I loved him to pieces in high school, and he, he taught us about the weathermen. And we were like, well, why didn't any other – like, why haven't we ever heard of this? Like, this is crazy what happened in the 60s. I think it was either the 60s or 70s. And he was like, because, you know, our school system doesn't want to teach this. Right. Right. So I definitely I definitely see what you're saying in terms of um, in terms of, like, how the media portrays things. Right. In the same sense, I also think that radical Islam is a problem. Like it's a widespread problem that needs to be dealt with. Right. Um. Yeah. No, I agree. But and another thing I'll say is that you've got to remember that you know the KKK is a Christian organization. Well, now let's be fair for a second. If something doesn't follow the ideals of like the Christian faith, can we call it Christian? Right. Like Hitler was called himself a Christian, but I wouldn't in any stretch of the imagination call him Christian. Okay. I'm, I mean, that's fair. The, the point I'm just trying to, to make is that, you know, there are many peaceful Christians, and then there are, you know, they call themselves, you know, Christians, but there's this radical group, you know, the KKK. Yeah. And I guess I'm just trying to say that I think that that mirrors as far as there are many, you know, peaceful Muslims, and then there are these radical Muslims that, you know, that are aren't they're not represent uh you know they don't i don't think they represent you know the many many peaceful muslims right right absolutely and and i i definitely i definitely get what you're saying it's a really difficult uh situation right um so is there is there any other topics you want to bring up uh hmm That's a good question. <laughs> um, I mean, I have stuff too. I don't want to. I like. I don't want you to feel like I'm. I'm strictly oh, putting it on you. I just don't want to hog. Oh no, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, I mean, if I think of something, I'll just say, okay. You know, hey, I thought of something. But yeah, no, you you bring up what you know what you're thinking. So uh, you know, um, everybody's a little different in in how their body works, right? You know, but right. You know, if you wanted to lose weight, how would you lose weight? Well, it's uh, well. The thing is, I actually have you know personal experience from that because before it's kind of ironic, but bef before I was a competitive eater, I was uh, basically fat, really fat. And the way that I solved that was just one day I just decided, you know, I don't want to be like this anymore. So 
you know, from that day on, you know, I didn't just say I'm going to do this and then not do it, but I, you know, started eating less and exercising pretty much every day. Very cool, very cool. This guy, so I'm, I'm reading this now on, on the M and the, uh, MSN News, and it says, uh, man lost weight by walking with a cement block on his <laughs> He lost 250 pounds like this. Mm-hmm. Right, and I don't know how to feel about it because I'm ready to go out and grab a cement block. Well, I would. I just like to say that that can't be good for his spine. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's a reason he's only five foot three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, but I just I think it's really funny because we I, I don't know if it's true or not. Like whether that's the reason why he actually lost the weight um, or not, but. Uh, I think it's it's really funny because uh, because uh, I just think that we see so many different things on TV about losing weight, um, and and then bam, like this guy loses weight by putting a block on his head. Right. Yeah, that's that's you don't see that typically on you know Doctor Oz. Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so I was just thinking about something. Um, would you be willing to – and the thing is I don't want this to – I don't want this to backfire me. And I, I mean you said you don't get offended easily. So would you be willing to basically watch the the first minute of Brickleberry on YouTube and kind of give a live reaction? My one question to this is does it have cursing in it? Uh, this clip, no, it does not have cursing. Yeah, then we're good. Okay. I mean it does have other uh, objectionable – content but there is no profanity in this clip okay yeah yeah that's cool that's and but now but in that same sense because you said you were also not uh easily offended am i allowed to give my honest feedback you definitely you are i just ask that uh let's see oh and i don't want to respectful wanna... i'll be respectful of the show well, I, I mean, I was thinking that, but at the same time, I don't want to censor your thoughts. I mean, basically, I just don't want to, and this is selfish, but I don't want people listening to this, you know, to, sure, yeah, you can say whatever you want, and it should just be known that, you know, that's that's basically your, you know, your opinion. It's it's clear that I love it and think it's hilarious. You might not. Right, right, and that's yeah. everybody's allowed to their own. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, definitely. Are you gonna Are you gonna give me the link, or do you want me to look it up? I can look it up. That's fine. I can just send you the link over Facebook. That'll work. Okay. But um, yep. Basically, so what if if it's if it's okay? Could you watch it, and then you know give your honest opinion and you know yeah. say what what you thought about it. Absolutely. So, absolutely. All right. I just sent you the clip, so I'll be interested to. All right. And again, if this, if this, well, we'll we'll see what happens. Now, can you hear the music in the background? Um, is it playing right now? It is. I cannot hear it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. You so want to take it back to the beginning of the video, and then? Uh, well, right now it's just a commercial. Oh, okay. So I was just wondering if you could hear it. Um, if not, because I, I wouldn't know how to do that. I'm not the techie guy. Well, could you just like turn up the volume and see if that? If I have headphones on, I, maybe that's what it is. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's... I can take the headphones off, though. If if that's not too much of a problem, the thing is, I just want to know where you are, because I, I know what it is from the sound. So, I just, I'm, I'm watching this right now, and I'm a little shocked, I'm not going to lie. What um, part are you at? I just, I, so I had to stop at around 30 seconds. Okay. With 30, 40 seconds, but I'm going to watch the whole thing from the beginning. Okay. Um, I'm going to say right now, I won't be describing what I hear simply for the sake of, I know we have listeners who are, uh, like, young listeners. Okay. So I'm not going to describe what I'm seeing. I will say I'm very shocked. <laughs> um, okay, so my honest... Oh, gosh, wow, this is going to be interesting. My honest opinion about the show, just okay. based off of that one minute, just based off of the one minute that I saw, is that it's concerning. Why is it concerning? So I understand that it's not geared for children, right? Like, I understand that. 
That's correct. But because it's in the form of an animation, and the content of just the first minute, it's very, it's disconcerting. Now, before you go any further, let me just ask, do you have your microphone, your headphones back on? I do. Okay, because you were kind of cutting. I mean, I could I could still hear you, but you were kind of cutting out a little bit, cutting in and out a little. But um, okay, so it's it's disconcerting because you you think that small children may see it and not realize it's targeted towards you know adults. Right. That's number one. That because I know that like I even like even looking at the first like five or ten seconds, right? Mm-hmm. If that's all, like, say, like, I'm a busy parent, right, and I'm mm-hmm. working on something, and I see that for the first five or ten seconds of a show, I'm going to let my kids watch that show if, it, if I don't see anything that comes after it, simply because it looks like an innocent kid's show. And, yeah, I agree, and I think that's what they were going for as far as not, not – I'm not saying that they were going I'm – they're, tr- not, they're not trying to trick people, like, to watch it. They're just trying to go for, okay, at first it seems like an innocent, you know, uh, nature, you know, scenery. It's pleasant, you know, that, that music's playing. You know, they're going – and then it, it, they want to catch you, you know, by surprise. Um, right. And so, like, I would – at the very least, I would prefer that there would be a little thing in the very, very beginning of it saying this is not meant for children. Okay, the thing I will say is when this when this show used to air on Comedy Central, before every episode began and after every commercial break when the show came back, it would say this uh, program is intended for mature audience. Okay, I, I think that's a little bit better just because once again, like I'm just saying like what I saw, it didn't have the warning, so it would be very disconcerting. Right. Um, knowing that, that something like that would be on that looks like it's projected for children. Right. But, yeah, I mean, again, since this is YouTube and it's on the Comedy Central, um, you know, channel, they, they just post the clip. But, again, when it's on TV, it never aired earlier than 10 p.m. And before every episode, they'd give you the warning. And then after every commercial break before the show began, they would give you the warning again. Right, right. Now, with that being said, um, I feel like, and this isn't just Brickleberry, this is America in general. Okay. Right? I feel like we take um, sex and, okay, so first let me just preface this. If you are a young listener, uh, please shut off the, the <laughs> podcast now. Um, so this is your warning, right? Uh, and if you don't accept that warning, parents, do not email us angry letters because we warned you. Uh, with that being said, um, I feel like our society takes sex and we change it to something that it's not meant to be, right? So, like, I think that the message that I got just from the first minute of Rickleberry is that um, it, it's making sex something that's very casual, and I don't think that it is something very casual. The, the thing I'll say is... It does it. Is it any better that it's it's sex with well not that sounds worse, but uh, it's it's sex between animals. Does that make it better? I think if anything, it might. It's complicated because in nature, right? Right. Animals, it, it's natural. All, right. All animals do is have sex and eat. That's, that's basically it, right? Like you never see your dog do much else other than hump stuff and eat. Yeah. Right. With that also being said, I think it's important to make a distinction that we're not animals, right? Like that, that because our society wants to make sex into a, a casual thing. And if it's okay with you, and if you're not offended, I would like to bring the biblical view. Yeah, that's fine. Like the Bible says that when two people have sex, their souls actually connect together, right? Like that there's a joining of souls. And so, like, when I see something like what, what I just witnessed, right, yes, it was between animals, and no, I don't believe animals have souls. Please, no angry letters. Um, I, I think that it, it is almost trying to bring something that was meant to be higher down, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying. 
with that also being said, I thought the uh, the camp counselor or whatever bringing the kids and saying uh, enjoy the you know like look at this in nature and all of its beauty. I thought yeah, that was fairly in comical. All of oh, you thought it was comical? I thought it was comical. See, like the the <laughs> the struggle between any um between any Christian and and society is the trying to juggle what what's genuinely funny and what's inappropriate. So I think what I saw was definitely inappropriate, but I can definitely see the comedic appeal behind it. Okay, and the, uh, I'm I'm glad that I'm I'm glad that you're, you're giving your you know your honest opinion that you're you know you're saying that you, you could see how it could be comical because I could see where some people would just say you know there's nothing you know there's nothing funny about it. No one would ever find it funny. Blah blah blah. But right, no, like as a Christian of eight years, I find it. I found it. Very, though, just the minute I saw it, very entertaining, but I also find it very inappropriate and probably, and I hope this doesn't offend you, probably will not be watching it. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, no, if that's completely fine. If you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. Yeah, but I, I and I appreciate you even, um, showing me the clip because I know a lot of people would just write me off as a Christian, uh, fanatic who would not just like wouldn't even bother showing me the clip. So I appreciate the chance. Oh yeah, no, I I just I just wanted to again I just wanted to you know kind of get your reaction and again you know just at least now you know you've seen you know some of it right right a little piece of it I will say though I think that that episode it I mean obviously because it's introducing the show it 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 starts off with something that would be considered vulgar. I mean, it does that on purpose because it's trying to introduce. I mean, it's called Welcome to Brickleberry. You know, that's kind of a, you know. Was that the pilot episode? Yeah, that was the first minute of the pilot episode. Okay. So, I mean, it is trying to introduce, you know, the series as this is what the show is. If you don't like it, you know, don't watch from this point on. Right, right. And I will say, that's uh, the pilot is not is in my opinion is not the is not the most vulgar episode, but it is it is more vulgar than probably the typical episode. And again, okay. I think it's just doing that to show what kind of show it is. Now, um, so out of curiosity, and then uh, if you don't mind me asking this question, uh, if you had kids, at what age would you allow them to watch Brickleberry? I think that's a <laughs> that's a really good question. Probably. I, honestly, I think that it, I think that at probably like 15, I would let them watch any episode. But probably 13 and 14, I would let them watch select episodes that I thought were, you know, that that, that I thought they could handle. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, very cool. Very cool. Uh, do you have anything else before we start to wrap up? Um, I don't think so. Okay. So, uh, do you have any suggestions for the listeners? Who would you our suggestion? When you say suggestion, do you mean like the thing about you know, there's there's one thing you should you know do or listen to or watch? Yeah, the one thing that that we do. Okay, um, let's see. Suggestion. Um, well, <laughs> I think that. I mean, I haven't. It's not even out yet, but. Again, I think if if you like the type of you know show that Brickleberry is, I think when the comic comes out on July thirteenth, I think you should check it out. I've already ordered thirteen copies. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Um, I would suggest I'm a huge, huge uh, Marvel fan, and they just released on Netflix season four of Agents of Shield. I just finished it. I binge watched it this entire week. It was amazing. Highly recommend it. Uh, and uh, what do you want to name this episode? That's a good question. Um, we we covered a lot. We really did. We really did. Um, hmm. Let's see. What's a good name that kind of ties it all together? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Put me on the spot. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, to. No, 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 no. It, it, it's fine. It's just. It's just we covered a lot, so ah, uh, hmm. We hmm. 
I tell you what, can I send you because I feel like I feel like we could wait on me for the next five minutes. Can I send you like a Facebook message like sometime tonight with the title? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Because right now I, I can't think of anything and if we just waited on me, you know, it might be a while. Yeah, no, that's totally cool. That's totally cool. All right. Thank you so much. We we love having you on our show. Thank you. Uh, we hope that you can you can come back soon. And uh, yeah, any parting comments? Just, just you know, enjoy life. <laughs> yes, enjoy life. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Oh, we. I don't know if you've listened to any of the recent episodes, but we've added um a new segment. Which is at the end of the episode, we'll name, uh, we'll, uh, uh, Joe's Bible Scripture is what it's called. So uh, I read one verse. If that's okay, okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and let's see what's so good. No, I, Mark, pick a, pick a page, any page. Okay. I'm going to say, oh, between what? Between one and 1500. All right, 963. 963, let's see. Oh, pass it. Give me one second, 963. All right, and uh, pick a number between 13 and 21. 17. 17, okay. And here is the, the verse that you picked, uh, and it is Isaiah 59, verse 17. It says, he put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. And uh, that was Joe's weekly Bible scripture with some help from Mark Pro Hungry. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the J and J podcast. Hopefully, John will not be back next week. Um, <laughs> but uh, if he is, we'll we'll be looking forward to saying hello to him. Mark, we hope we can come on soon again. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, I'd like to. You know, I'd like to be on again in the future, and I hope that, you know, I hope that the the Brickleberry clip didn't, you know, scare you away or make you think any less of me. Oh no, not at all, Mark. Trust me when I tell you, I hold you in such high regard. There's nothing you can do to bring you uh, bring you down, in my view. Oh, thank you. All right, peace out, Cub Scout. Peace out, Cub Scout.